This is a battery. This is an inverter. These are panels. This is my dashboard. I'm Ben, and this is Smart Home Ideas. Let's talk solar. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're here, you might be thinking about getting solar, but you don't know if it's a bright idea. We had a ton of questions before we made the leap, like how long until we get our money back? How many panels do we actually need? Should we buy a battery? If we buy a battery, what size battery should we get? Will it be a waste of space in the winter? And what the heck is an inverter? So after two summers and a winter with our solar setup, we've got some answers. And maybe after hearing them, you're warm to the idea of getting some panels. I'm pretty amped to share them. They're definitely gonna brighten your day. I'll break this video down into chapters so that you can easily find the answers you're looking for. There's no need to binge watch it all at once, unless of course you want to. And here's what we'll cover. The specs of each part of the system, how much energy the panels actually produce, our typical household energy usage, the difference between summer and winter energy usage, what happens with all the excess electricity, how our battery has been a game changer, how we heat our water with an eddy, and how everything integrates seamlessly with Home Assistant. Our solar setup features 12 Trino panels, each at 425 watts. That gives us just over five kilowatts of power, which is plenty to keep things running smoothly. Uh, we've also got a Give Energy 9.5 kilowatt hour battery as well. And that's about two thirds of our daily energy needs. So it means that we make sure we make the most of what the sun's giving us. Uh, the Give Energy 3 inverter that we have is basically the system's powerhouse. It converts the solar energy that we get back into something that the house can actually use. And don't worry, we'll get into that in a minute. And then there's the My Energy Eddy, which heats our water before sending anything extra back to the grid. It's designed to keep us both energy efficient and comfortable year round. Here's some interesting data to look at. So we've taken from January the 1st to January 22nd, so just the first few weeks of January. And you can see in the blue, we've got consumption power. And then the purple, we've got how much solar energy we've taken on that particular day. So if I turn off the solar energy, you can see on average, we're getting, if you follow the 15 kilowatt hour, just a quick note in case the term kilowatt hour is confusing for anyone. If you boil the kettle, it takes about three kilowatts. If you were to boil the kettle for an hour, that would be three kilowatt hours. Mark all the way along. We get on average, I would say over those three weeks, about the 15 kilowatt hours. So if we overlay PV energy over the top, this is how much solar we're taking every, every, every day. So you can see there's, there's a few instances where we take slightly more solar than we do actually energy we use, but this is kind of to be expected in the first month of the year during winter. Uh, we're taking significantly more energy than we're actually getting from the solar panels. So fast forward, if we go to maybe June and we look at the first two or three weeks of June, um, then we're gonna get a slightly different story. And you can see this is the consumption and this is the amount of solar we're taking. So on some days we're taking way more solar than the amount of energy we're actually using. So you could take on the 3rd of June, for example, we were using 20.4 kilowatt hours and we actually got 31.9 kilowatt hours from the solar panels. And then we'll fast forward another couple of months to August. We'll take the first couple of weeks of August and you'll be able to see like this is where we're up to now. At the moment, we're taking nearly every day, we're taking more solar than actually energy that we're using. Um, so this is this is really good and expected for summer. You can see earlier on in the winter, we're, we're not taking as much solar as the amount that we're actually using. We don't always need to maximize energy use during the day when the sun's shining. Instead, we prefer to run the air cons overnight to keep the bedrooms cool, nice and comfortable for sleeping. With nine and a half kilowatt hours, we have enough energy to last until the next day without relying on the grid. So we don't hesitate to turn on the air con anymore, knowing that it's gonna be powered by free energy. When the days are shorter, we cook after the sun has passed peak brightness, uh, but we can still use the battery to power the oven. All of that's pretty obvious, but what isn't obvious is how you can make money using your battery. 
Uh, there are plans that you can sign up to like Octopus Flux or Give Energy Give Back, and they'll actually pay you for helping balance the grid. So what this means is your battery will basically be charged using cheaper rates. And then when the grid's under stress, your battery will be used to feed back into the grid. So this means you can actually use your battery to make money, which is awesome. Uh, there's course catch. If you, if you plan on doing this, you'll be putting the battery through extra charge cycles, which could shorten the life of your battery. So I would encourage you to do the maths yourself if you plan on going down this route and figure out how long your battery will last with the extra charge cycles versus how much money you're actually gonna get back from your energy supplier. Our system's pretty clever when it comes to using excess solar energy. So first the extra power goes to the battery and then it gets sent to the eddy uh, to heat our hot water and then whatever's left will head back to the grid. We've got a hot water tank that uses an immersion heater and it's usually fired up with gas, but thanks to the eddy, we can also use electricity to heat a portion of it. The eddy simply just decides when to turn the immersion heater on and off. Uh, the battery won't charge at any more than 2.6 kilowatts. So if the battery isn't completely full, as long as we're getting more than 2.6 kilowatts from the panels, the eddy will heat the hot water before sending of that excess back to the grid. And since our energy provider pays us for any surplus we send back, it helps chip away at the daily standing charge. As I mentioned earlier, the inverter is basically the brains of the whole operation. Ours is a Give Energy inverter and it uses a communications protocol called Modbus. There's a Give Energy Modbus Python library that knows how to talk to the inverter and there's a Home Assistant wrapper around that library that will wire it all up to Home Assistant. It's around 30 seconds between updates and it all happens locally. So you can monitor real-time energy usage and solar panel production even if the internet's out. So to get this up and running home system, you just have to head over to Hacks and you're going to install Give Energy Local. This is the wrapper that I was talking about earlier that will do all of the integration with the inverter for you. So it will basically speak Modbus through this additional Python library. And once that's installed, you will get an integration uh, that will provide the solar inverter and the battery. I tend to not to bother with the, the battery device and the entities in there very much because you can see the the charge is 11%. So it, the remaining capacity is about 1.1 uh, kilowatt hours. You get a lot of the similar details uh, through the inverter. So you can see what the battery percentage is, for example. And um, so I tend to only use the inverter device and the entities that are provided through that. And it gives you a ton of information. So we've got things like what the battery charge is today. So that's how how much energy we've taken through solar and charged the battery up with. How much the battery is discharged today? 5.3 kilowatt hours. This makes sense because as you can see, as the sun goes down, so sort of 5 p.m. last night, as we're working our way through the evening, it's obviously gonna cut at midnight, and continue to discharge the battery. That's because we're not getting much solar at this point. It's quite a cloudy day today, so we're not taking a lot of solar, but you can see gradually how the battery is discharging. So we get that kind of information through it as well. Some good health metrics, like the temperature of the battery. We're gonna get things like how much energy we've consumed uh, today. So today we've actually consumed 10 kilowatt hours so far, which is quite a lot actually. Bit, bit more than our baseline. And you can see we've also exported a little bit of energy to the grid today as well. So 1.6 kilowatt hours. So we both discharged and charged the battery today. And you can see, yeah, this is how much solar we've taken today, 6.6 .6 kilowatt hours. And this is um, how much we've taken in total, which is, is, a, is a really nice number, 8,057 8, kilowatt hours, which is fantastic. We've also got this dashboard as well, which is going to show us in real time how much solar we're taking. And like I mentioned earlier, this updates about every 30 seconds or so. That's when we'll be able to get data from the inverter. And this card below is going to show us how much solar we took yesterday, the day before and three days ago. So you can see yesterday we took 18 kilowatt hours from the solar panels. Not bad. 11.5 the day before and a whopping 24.2 kilowatt hours the day before that. So quite happy with that. 
We've also got this card up in the top right hand corner. So this is going to show us the flow of electricity. So you can see at the moment we're taking about 900 watts from the solar panels. The house is using about 700 watts and the battery is on about 12% charge and about 200 watts of the solar energy is going into the battery. Right, let's talk numbers. Between January the 1st, 2023 and January the 1st, 2024, we used a total of 3,091.7 kilowatt hours of electricity compared to the 7,540 kilowatt hours we used between January the 1st, 2022 and January the 1st, 2023. So the reduction in energy was obviously a result of us having the solar panels installed and getting the battery installed. And that saved 4,448.3 kilowatt hours over the comparative time span. With a price of around 22.49 pence per kilowatt hour, uh, this means a financial saving of around 1,000 pounds and 42 pence. So the total cost of the solar panel system was 13,474. So by my calculations, we should break even in approximately 13 and a half years. The Trina panels have a lifespan of 25 to 30 years, while the battery is expected to last 15 to 20 years. So overall, I think it was still a good decision to get the solar panels and battery installed. What do you think? Uh, if there's anything else you want to know about the system, feel free to reach out in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful and I will catch you in the next one.